All right, so we're starting from Ohm's law. We have V equals IR, and we just said R is 1 over sigma times L over A. If we solve this equation for the current, we can get I is equal to V sigma A over L. Then we can rewrite the voltage in terms of the electric field. So we would have, uh, let's do that over here. V is integral of L E dot DL. Now this is along a straight line and E is constant over it. So um, we can, I don't need a vector anymore, we will have E applied times times L, the total length uh, in between the two plates. So plugging that in here, we get E applied times L, and putting that in for V, sigma A is still there, and L is in the denominator. And next we can relate the current on the left side to the current density. So now I can write I is S, integral of J dot N hat dS. And if we assume the current density is uniform over the cross-sectional area of the slab, which we can do especially if the plates are very wide, compared to the distance between the plates, and there's we neglect fringing fields and so forth. So we're going to approximate this as J is equal to A. So putting all this together, we have J A is equal to E applied L sigma A over L. And we can simplify by getting rid of the L's. We can also get rid of the A's. And now what do we end up with, we have J is equal to sigma E applied. So we did it. This is what is known as the microscopic form of, amp of Ohm's law. So it's just another way of writing Ohm's law, but we're describing the same physics as the one you're more familiar with, which is V equals IR. So now we have our two currents written in terms of the electric field, and we can directly compare them. We have the conduction current density is sigma E, so I could probably just take that out and just call it an electric field, and we also have the displacement current is epsilon DE applied DT. So in summary, what you learned in circuits class is incomplete. For example, if we apply Kirchhoff's current law to the node on the left side here, in circuits class you would just sum up all the conduction current flowing into and out of the node, and that would be it. But in reality, there may be displacement current in the circuit that you need to account for as shown on the right for this node. Keep in mind that the displacement current labeled here, this is I sub D, this is displacement current, and it's not giving an actual direction, it's not like the displacement current is actually flowing in the direction of this dotted arrow. Instead, this is a vector just representing displacement current that could be anywhere in the circuit and flowing all, in all directions, potentially. For example, displacement current in a circuit could be radiation from like the microstrips or strip lines on a circuit board. And as clock rates keep going higher and higher in computers, and as we want to send more and more information faster between components on a circuit board, eventually those microstrips and strip lines start to act like little antennas inside the computer. Those wavelengths are getting shorter and shorter, and the strip lines are looking longer and longer. So they're going to radiate better. So eventually we'll have to find a different way to send that information, and frankly, at some point, circuit boards might even become a thing of the past and be replaced by something else like optical interconnects and, and other things. To complete this discussion of Ampere's Law, let's relate the pointwise form of Ampere's Law to the integral form of Ampere's Law. So just like uh, um, we introduced different forms of, of 
of Ohm's law. Now we're going to just show that we can go from one form of Ampere's law to another form of Ampere's law. So I have here, we have um, both of these expressions that we saw in the WP1 lecture. They both describe the same physics, and so we should be able to relate them to each other. So to get to the integral form, we're going to start with this one, and we're going to get to the integral form. We need to do two things. One, we need, because this is the pointwise form, we need to apply this to a region of space. So we're going to integrate Ampere's law over a 2D region of space, like a 2D surface. It can be, it would be an imaginary surface. And two, we're going to apply uh, Stokes' theorem. And here is Stokes' theorem. In words, we use Stokes' theorem to relate a surface integral to a contour line integral, uh, where the contour line has to be bounding uh, along the perimeter of that surface. So the B vector here, it represents any vector. And if we integrate the curl of B over a surface, uh, curl, oops, curl of B through that, over that surface, that will give us the same value, the same answer, as if we were to integrate B along the outside of that surface, along the contour line on the outside of that surface. Spend a minute and see if you can get the integral form of Ampere's law by following the two steps. Integrating the pointwise form over a 2D region, a surface, and applying Stokes' theorem.